Hello everyone, welcome back. Here is Ali Talibi and this is the second lesson from module 20, Risk Management. I promise I'm going to talk more about futures and there you are. We're going to talk about hedging with futures. Also, uh, we'll talk about futures trading counts, spot future parity, and finally I will wrap up by talking about cross hedging. So let's start our session. So we talk about uh, hedging and uh, speculation. And uh, last uh, session, uh, I mainly focus on uh, specu uh, speculation. Now let's talk about hedging. And uh, as we remember from the previous session, we learned that the goal of a hedger here is to use the futures contract to transfer the price risk. So you're afraid that the specific uh, item, uh, the underlying asset, here we talk about underlying asset is going to increase or decrease in the price so what you do to protect yourselves to reduce the risk you are using the uh, futures contract so in this case what you will do you uh, you use the futures contract uh, which has the uh, opposite uh, uh, position co uh, compared to the existing position the commodity or financial instrument for example let's assume you are uh, the owner of a specific product or in your warehouse storage you have a specific product and you're afraid maybe the price of that specific pro product is going to uh, decrease in the uh, upcoming months so what you will do you will go and actually take a short position uh, on that specific commodity so you will go and sell the futures contract for that specific item in this case you can lock into the specific price you can hedge yourself against fluctuation or more specifically price reduction of that specific uh, product because in the futures contract the price as we learned is uh, going to be set so you know in advance how much you are going to receive if you sell that specific product so that's the meaning of taking an opposite uh, position uh, given the commodity or financial instrument that currently you uh, have. Now, let's go with the uh, taking uh, a short position. And I'm going to show you an example how uh, establishing a short position can help you to hedge yourself. Uh, for example, let's assume a company has a large inventory that will be sold at a future date. So the inventory is full. You are going to sell it not now, maybe two months from now, three months from now. Uh, and as we learned before, the prices are changing every day. So in this case, the company might uh, uh, lose its money because the value or the price of the inventory is going down. So how uh, this specific company can protect itself from the price fluctuation or more specifically price drop the company can go and take the short position on the futures contract, which means selling futures contract today can offset the potential declines in the value of the uh, inventory. So uh, again, the act of selling futures contract to protect protect yourself from selling pro uh, from uh, actually uh, uh, drop in the prices is called short uh, hedging. So let's look at the specific example. So let's assume a Starbucks has an inventory of 1 million pounds of coffee uh, valued at $1.62 uh, per pound. Uh, a Starbucks is kind of afraid maybe the price is going, the price of coffee is going to go down. So uh, it wants to protect itself from any price drop. So what a strategy a Starbucks can take in this case? Uh, simply, they, ca uh, they can go and actually buy, uh, they can go and uh, use the uh, futures contract to hedge themselves. So they will take the short position, they will sell futures contract in this case. Now, they go to uh, New York Board of Trade, NYBT, for example, and they look at the contract and they see that each contract is actually 37,500 pounds of coffee. If you remember, I mentioned that the futures, they have uh, a standardized kind of features in terms of units, for example. So in other words, uh, you cannot, for example, sell uh, 20,000 pounds of coffee. You have to go with a multiple of 37,500 pounds of coffee. Uh, so if you go with two contracts, it, it will end up to having 75,000 pounds of coffee. Anyway, 
And this specific futures contract, uh, we, we mentioned they have the expiry date of three months and uh, the value or the price of this future contract is $1.70 per pound. So uh, again, you can go and take the short position or sell futures contract to protect yourselves from the price uh, reduction. Now, here is the, the, the dilemma. If you go with 26 contract, uh, you can cover 975,000 pounds of copy. If you go with 27 contracts, it will cover 1,012,000 pounds of coffee. In other words, uh, there is no exact specific number of contracts which can cover exactly 1 million pounds. So either you, ha you need to go with 26 contracts or you can go with 27. Uh, uh, we call that perfect hedging. So you cannot go with perfect hedging because the, you need to go with 26 point something contracts in this case. Uh, uh, you can go, for example, with 26 future contracts and you will see there will be 25,000 pounds of coffee which is unprotected and we'll see that actually uh, the impact of this unprotected 25,000 pounds of coffee is not major on the total value uh, of your hedging so we'll talk about this so as I mentioned let's assume we go with 26 uh, futures contract so Starbucks is going to sell 26 uh, futures contract uh, now, uh, the price is changing, uh, the price of coffee is changing, going up and down. So let's assume when we look at the next month, the price of the coffee is actually going down. Uh, so uh, Starbucks now is happy because uh, uh, is using the uh, futures contract to sell its inventory. Uh, and let's assume the uh, value of the inventory is going down. Uh, the value of coffee is going down to $1.56 and the value of the futures contract for sure also is going down as the spot prices are going down to $1.64. So this is one month after, which means there are the two months. Now we are talking about the two months, which is left from the futures contract uh, agreement. Now, what was the performance of this hedging? Uh, what's happening to Starbucks? Gaining, losing, protecting. So let's look at a few numbers here. So if you look at the current situation, we'll see that the current price, uh, the current spot price is $1.62. Uh, so the value of the inventory, if you remember, was 1 million pound. Now is $1.62 million. Uh, the, if you look at the futures, uh, the future was $1.70. Uh, it was the selling price for Starbucks. Uh, and uh, the Starbucks, if you remember, uh, purchased 26 contracts, uh, which covers, which is good for 975,000 uh, pounds. In this case, uh, the value of the contract will be 1.65, 7.5 million dollars. And uh, in this case, any changes any uh, drops in the futures to some degree is good for the futures contract but it's not good for the uh, spot uh, value of the inventory because we notice there is a portion of the inventory which is not protected and this portion uh, the, the company is actually losing uh, money again remember the hedge was not perfect so we can say the short hedging will help Starbucks to actually uh, make $58,500 because the prices are uh, going down, the futures prices are going uh, down. In, in this case, the Starbucks is make, making $58,500 gain because of the futures contract. And on the other side, we'll see that the value of the inventory is going down by $60,000, which means in this case that uh, the Starbucks is just losing 1,500 bucks, which is not much. It's almost protected. The company is almost protected about uh, the price changes. So that's the meaning of hedging. Uh, and uh, the company, the Starbucks, is not concerned about the price reduction because it's almost perfect, almost perfectly protected against price uh, drop. Now, maybe you say, Ali, what would happen if the prices had increased by uh, six cents in a set? So, what is the impact? So, let's look at this uh, situation. 
So here is a case in which the prices uh, has increased by six uh, cents. Now, after you, as you see uh, in this example, uh, the, the company now is actually making $1,500. So there will be a loss on the futures contract. There will be some gain on the, uh, the, the spot prices, uh, which means finally at the end of the day, the company is making $1,500. Uh, Again, not that much. That's the whole thing. The hedging is helping the company to reduce the fluctuation on the gain or loss. So it wants to make sure that I have uh, the same specific amount no matter what. No matter what, I, I want to make sure that I will get a specific amount for the items which I have in my uh, inventory. So for sure, you can also use futures contract uh, for hedging if you need something in the future. In this case, you need to take the line position. For, uh, for example, if the company is going to buy a specific commodity sometime at the future and the company is afraid, maybe the prices go uh, up for the specific item. So uh, the company can take a long position for uh, that specific commodity. In this case, the company is able to fix the price that uh, uh, he is going to pay uh, uh, in the uh, future. Uh, buying futures contract today, remember, offsets the potential increases in the price of the commodity. The act of buying futures contract to protect from rising prices is called uh, long hedging. Again, so you can take the uh, long position for hedging if you expect the prices are going to uh, increase or you want just to uh, protect yourself from any increase in the price uh, in the, uh, for the future or you want to fix uh, your future uh, gain. So you can take the long position. So let's be a little bit more practical and see how actually the futures trading is happening. What is the uh, execution of the futures uh, trading? So we need to know about uh, a few items which are related to the uh, accounts, the trading accounts. So the first thing here is uh, something which we call initial margin. So if you want just to take a shorter line position, doesn't matter. You need to have an initial margin in place. Uh, in other words, it's called the good face deposit. Uh, and you need to have this money available when you are going to initially establish your uh, futures contract. So this is for just protecting both buyer and seller. Uh, just make sure if something happened in the market, the prices are uh, remarkably going up or down. Uh, both parties are protected. Uh, and remember, the level of uh, initial margin usually depends on two major factors and what are these two factors the first one is the price volatility of the underlying asset usually if the volatility is higher the initial margin also is higher if the volatility is lower you expect to have a lower initial margin the second factor is the um, uh, type of the trader so what type of trader you are talking about what is the risk level of the trader so the, those traders which they have the uh, higher um, uh, risk, you should expect to uh, see the higher initial margin for those uh, traders. Uh, remember again, when the price of the futures uh, are changing, the futures exchange adds or subtract money from trading account. This is called mark to mark. We talk about this. So on everyday basis, uh, this mark to marking, um, uh, uh, this mark to market is actually happening. Uh, so uh, you, your uh, initial margin might go down because the value of the underlying asset is changing every day. So your initial margin might go down. So in this case, if your initial margin is going down, too low in a way that it's actually uh, it's even lower than the maintenance margin you will receive a margin call so there is a maintenance margin there is a specific level uh, or the minimum level of the uh, margin that you have to keep so if it goes below that level you will receive a margin uh, call so again a margin call that's a request uh, from the broker uh, for the uh, trader just to make sure that uh, he is able to top up the money uh, back to the initial margin. Now, maybe you say, Ali, what will happen if the uh, buyer or seller is not able to uh, actually top up uh, the account? 
in this case for sure the account will be closed and uh, the account will be settled so uh, whatever is available will be collected and if something is left in the uh, uh, as a deposit or in the account will be returned to the uh, buyer or seller so several times we talk about the spot prices and the future prices and for sure you notice the spot prices are the current prices which can buy or sell at the current price and future prices are the prices of the future for sure so uh, logically you should expect to see a relationship between the spot and the uh, future uh, prices and the, this relationship is called a spot future parity if uh, a specific asset can be purchased today and held until the exercise of futures contract the value of the future should be equal to the current spot price of that specific asset adjusted for uh, the cost of money dividends and any carrying costs that's it that's the meaning of spot future parity now you can uh, write or you can define and specify the relationship between the spot price and future prices uh, as what you see here so it's based on the spot prices times one plus r to power of t so this is the uh, value uh, of the future prices uh, and maybe you say ali is it always true if this equation doesn't hold there will be arbitrage opportunity so you should expect that for uh, the future prices are based on spot prices and the uh, uh, risk-free rate uh, based on which should be adjusted for the number of periods which is t so again f here is the futures price as is s is the spot price r is the risk free rate and the t is the number of periods uh, before the uh, futures contract is actually uh, expiring so again this equation should hold otherwise there will be arbitrage opportunity so you can benefit uh, from buying or selling futures contract and finally let's talk about cross hedging so when we talk about the cross hedging actually we're talking about uh, hedging a specific uh, spot position with futures contract on a related but not identical not same commodity or financial uh, instrument for example you decide to protect your stock portfolio from fall in the value so you're afraid that the value of your portfolio the stock portfolio is going down what you can do you can go and sell S&P 500 um, stock index futures in this case. So that's very interesting. So you have the stock, you own the stock, uh, and you're concerned this stock or the collection of the stocks, which we call that portfolio for sure, the portfolio of the stocks, the value is going down. So you can go and take a short position on the S&P 500 um, uh, index, uh, there is a future for that so you can take a short position on that to protect yourself against uh, any reduction on the value of your portfolio and uh, uh, remember that when we talk about the cross hedging uh, these changes in the portfolio we, we just talked about uh, it's not the same as the changes in the value of the S&P 500 in other words you don't need to buy uh, as same as uh, the value of your portfolio because the movement is not same and we learned this in the past the market you're talking about the market you're talking about the portfolio or a specific stock the movement of the portfolio or a stock compared to the movement of the market highly depends on something we call beta we learned that if your portfolio is moving exactly same as the market you're talking about the beta one but most of times you're talking about uh, a, a kind of uh, more or higher kind of level of movement or less movement in this case you have to go and buy uh, different uh, number of futures contract for uh, hedging yourself so let me talk about this in more a specific way so let's talk more about uh, cross hedging let's assume you have a uh, portfolio and you want to hedge your portfolio against any uh, value uh, reduction so what you will do uh, you need to go and actually uh, have futures contract in place in other words you want just to take a short position on the futures contract but how many contract you need I mentioned that this is highly dependent on the uh, beta of your portfolio 
So uh, because the beta is measuring the uh, movement of your portfolio when the market is moving. Uh, and remember that uh, we are using as S&P 500 index here as the as a, as a good benchmark for the market. Now, since we are using the S&P 500 index, uh, the beta of the futures contract should be a number close to uh, one. So, if you know the, uh, your portfolio is beta, you should be able to find the number of contracts you need to have to hedge yourselves against fluctuation of your portfolio. So here is a formula. That's a formula you can use to find the number of contracts you need to sell, actually to hedge yourself. So you see the value of portfolio is one item. The value of the futures contract is another. And the beta of the uh, portfolio and the beta of the futures. I mentioned the beta of the futures is a number close to one. So you need to have three other items, VP, VF, and beta of portfolio to find the number of required um, contracts. And one last note here is that the dollar value of one S&P 500 futures contract is the VF. However, uh, you should consider 250 as the contract size for the S&P 500 uh, index futures uh, because that future is sold at a lot of 250. And we learned that in futures, that's very common to see uh, uh, the kind of different uh, contract size for different items. So those are standardized. So just make sure you go with the multiplication of 250 uh, units when it comes to S&P 5. That's it for today. Thank you very much again. And next session, we'll talk about options, one of the most favorite topics in the world of risk management and derivatives. Till then, have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. And here is Ali Talabi.